contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. After the first week of competition, the Alpha Group reigns supreme, but the question is, will their domination continue? Hello, everyone, and welcome to week two of VCT Americas, coming at you live once again, as always, because we have nowhere else to go, the Riot Games Arena in Los Angeles, California. Of course, I'm Golden Boy. We got Doug, we got Wyatt, and we have a special guest. It's Shazam from G2. Good to have you here, my friend. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, you're, we're gonna put you to work today, okay? You're gonna <laughs> earn, earn, earn your paycheck here, okay? This is gonna be a fun one. We're gonna have a good time, but first, let's go ahead and talk about our current standings, because week one took a very uh, unexpected, dare I say, one-sided turn, unless you're MIBR, of course, because the Alpha Group won every single match. Let's actually go ahead and show the standings there, because Wyatt, you were blown away by this when you saw it earlier this on. Is, it's a pathetic state <laughs> for the Omega Group, when the best team is just they haven't played. <laughs> I mean, this is just sad. This is just, ugh. MIBR in first, zero and zero. Fury lost, 100 Thieves lost, Lev lost, Loud lost. I mean, you can shoot Loud some bail, right? Yeah. They had the whole Lev, thing. Lev, laugh, Lev, Loud, lost. Oh, Ronnie Mimi was here. We're not Lev laughing or loving. <laughs> Lev fans are depressed as hell. The yeah. team looked terrible. <laughs> it's just the Omega group. Hopefully, maybe they'll turn it around, surely. Surely yeah. they'll get some wins over Sen and NRG this week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, it is, it's it is, brutal. It is like an impossible situation, right? Like surely yeah. after week one, nobody would have thought, I mean, really winless? Surely somebody is going to walk away with a win. Yeah. This is just, this has been a wild start to the year. Hey, well, you know, anything is possible. Let's take a look at our schedule here and see what we're going to have coming up on the docket today because we're starting off the day with G2 taking on 100 Thaves. And then after that, it's going to be a kickoff rematch where we have Sentinels taking on Leviathan Shazam. I feel like it's going to be easy answer. Which, which game excites you the most here? Uh, G2 100 Thieves. I think Surprise. they're the most evenly matched team. Um, yeah. But yeah, obviously, I'm going to be biased that, here. that does look like an exciting matchup, though, because you're, you're right. Both of these teams are kind of coming into it with, with you know, similar expectations here, right? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be really fascinating. We'll see what happens there. What about for you guys? I mean, any, any Sen Leviathan enjoyers today? I'm, I'm really excited for them. I think this Leviathan roster on paper should be good. We and they, saying that. they have struggled, right? <laughs> and so we, everyone's wondering, like, all right, when are we going to go from paper to, like, translating it on stage? And when yeah. are you going to start executing? And I think that's something that a lot of people are still really excited for. This is a really good litmus test, though. Yeah. I think, yes, you're playing against the best team in the world right now. You've got to convert. But honestly, when you have a team that's been built this way and you've got those pieces on the roster, you just kind of have to deliver, right? All I'm right? saying like, is if Leviathan beat Sentinels today. That's going to be fun. What are you going to do? I don't know. Go balls. Yeah, I was Maybe. waiting, was waiting to see where you were going. No, I was, I was, I was more just Jones. like, I'm going to go on the internet and just look at people's reactions and see them get mm. mad and funny. I don't know. People's right. disappointment online brings me joy. That's provocative. You know? <laughs> what can I say? I'm a monster. Uh, in any case, come on, really? <laughs> Mimi's not here. We don't have to do this today. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, today, Sentinels and Leviathan match means that we get to see two former teammates and world champions face off once again. Of course, we're talking about about Sassy and Aspas. When I met Aspas, he people thought he was cheating in the game because <laughs> he was so good. Even I did. Then when I started playing with him, I noticed that he didn't know anything about the game, <laughs> how to play it. So I kind of it's weird to say that, but I kind of raised him, and uh, yeah, it turns out that now he's one of the best players in the world. Cool. So much noise, curveball, two kills, make that three. What I did back with Aspas is that we would always do VOD review together, like one-on-one. -on -one. So I would always watch him, telling him what he needs to do to get better. So instead of doing my VOD review, I would do his because I wanted him to grow because I saw all the potential of him. And yeah, I think it was worth it. We won chance. <laughs> Quando a gente estava na Loud junto, uh, ele era uma pessoa que me ajudava muito. Ele me ajudava muito, não só dentro de jogo, também fora de jogo, porque eu não sabia fazer muita coisa fora de jogo, só sabia jogar. Uh, eu tenho uma memória bem engraçada com o Saci. A gente estava treinando um dia uh, na Loud e aí eu morri, não lembro nem o que aconteceu, e aí o Saci pegou e falou 
ô, ô, aspas, o que, que você acha que você deveria ter feito ali? O que, que aconteceu? Aí eu peguei e falei pra ele, mano, mobinha, se eu tivesse acertado o tiro no cara, tinha dado certo. E aí... Ele disse, oh, next time I will shoot him in the head. So I was like, ok. Aspas, na verdade, me ensinou muito, você sabe? Ele me ensinou como ser paciente. Eu acho que ele foi bem importante, sim, pra mim, pra eu ser o player que eu era agora. É, é sempre legal estar jogando contra o Saci. Como eu já disse várias vezes, eu gosto de jogar contra players bons e ele também é um grande amigo meu, então é mais legal ainda jogar contra ele. Eu sei como ele joga, ele sabe como eu penso também, então, sim, é sempre um jogo de banger match jogar contra Aspas. It is an insane luxury to be considered one of the best players in the world and Sassy go, yeah, you know, I saw him, he was really good, I thought he was cheating, and then I got to know him better and realized he doesn't know how to play the game. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about yeah. the game, which is just, I mean, insane. To yeah. be that good and to not know the game is just wild. Yeah, very impressive. Uh, Shazam, you, you've, you've been around for a while. Any <laughs> any players you've taken under your wing over um, the course of your career? Yeah, I think, well, for the original Sentinels roster, I feel like I was all of their dad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm running the daycare over there, but um, I think... <laughs> Most recently, Oxy. I've like, you know, if I could buy stocks in a player, Oxy. Yeah. I think that not just being like incredibly talented, like he's a very good kid. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah easy yeah. to work with, and you know that comes rare with superstar talent. Yeah. So, yeah. Caught that vibe immediately. Good. Also the pop-offs. I mean, it just uh, that makes me an Oxy fan forever. Uh, it's going to be awesome to see. Of course, all our players take the stage in a moment. But let's go ahead and shift gears to our first matchup of the day. We got G2 versus Hundred Thieves. Now, G2, they did. You know, it wasn't the best start for for this team going into the kickoff, but I, I feel like, you know, undoubtedly why this G2 team is definitely with the addition of Icy is certainly come into their own here. I'm excited to see what they can cook up. Yeah, it's allowed other players on the team to make some role swaps that they're looking very comfortable on as well. Leaf going to the Killjoy. He's played a number of different agents on various teams in the game. He played Killjoy previously, and just having a guy like that alive in the late rounds and anchoring a site where the rest of the team can focus elsewhere is really allowing them to thrive on defense, especially uh, on, on Lotus. So that's been pretty cool. And Icy himself, yeah, I mean, he, you know, he was good. He did what he needed to do. He didn't light the world on fire in his debut, but he did what the team required of him to get a win. You can't really ask for much more than that for the first game on stage, right? And first time, like, in a Tier 1 team as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was interesting to listen to, it was both Alan and Josh talking about the role swaps and some of what was going on there and how it felt like from the beginning, the design was almost for Leaf to play Sentinel. And, you know, he had played it a couple of times last year, but this really feels like a position now where they're able to put him in that comfortable role. I think it was in the interview, Valen said, it, it almost felt like Leaf was designed mm. to play Sentinel. So he feels more comfortable, and I, I think you're right. Icy doesn't have to pop off. He doesn't have to light the world on fire. I think as long as he's creating space, as long as he's doing what the team's asking of him, this G2 roster could look really good. I think now more than ever, with a team yeah. that's been around as long as it has and has been playing together as long as they have, it's not about people popping off. It's about fitting your role and doing your job for the team. And that could be the key to success for G2 moving forward. Yeah, potentially. I mean, uh, anything on your end that you yeah, saw there? Um, definitely. I think with roles being more defined and, like, sometimes when you play with the same group of people for a long time, it becomes your team. Yeah. And when a roster change happens, it's like a breath of fresh air within the team and the dynamics. And so everyone becomes extremely motivated. Yeah. And it just, like, brings a whole new feeling to the team. I like to uh, equate it to the new car smell. You know, you ever get a new car? I mean, I don't have a driver's license, but if you had a new car, right, it smells good. You don't have a driver's license? Yeah, I'm from New York, man. I don't this need a driver's like, license, Bobby. This doesn't even And I walk to work every day, yeah, you know what I mean? Surprise you. Look at, the, look at these hammies. You look at these glutes, you know? <laughs> Your calves have to be jacked out. Oh, 100%, bro. I make tall leaps in a single bound. Uh, no, but seriously, it, it really is that. It's like this team's got, like, a, a freshness to them, and that's a positive. That's what you want to see, especially for G2. Now, speaking of Icy, as a matter of fact, let's go ahead and hear it from him because we've got Geek Heavy standing by. All right, we got G2 approaching. Icy, Icy, over here. Now, as the new guy, I got to ask you this. How much time have you had to integrate into the roster? Uh, I've had, like, three or four weeks, but, you know, I feel like I'm fitting well into the team. And things are running smoothly. Okay. So, you ready for today? Of course. I'm ready. Excited? Very excited. All right. Good luck out there. 
All right, well, you heard there, excited to jump into the game. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm also looking forward to one other player, Valen, who's going to be taking the stage with this G2 lineup because the fragging IGL was living up to the role yesterday, uh, uh, last week, Doug, said yesterday, last week, time's uh, elusive to me. Uh, but I got to say, to see Valen fragging like this and stepping up for the team is huge for them. Yeah, and I think especially when it's coming from your leader, it, it's motivating, right? Yeah. It creates a spark when you see a guy like that who can Didn't happen all the time, but, you no. know. And, but I do think even, even when it does happen, it creates a lot of value both in the short term and in the long term, right? If you've got a guy who's leading from the front like that, someone who's been so vocal and who's also putting up the numbers that he has, that's the catalyst to the start often uh, of something that could be really special. And I think it has to come from someone like Valen. You wouldn't really expect to see it from many other people. I think when that happens, things bode well for G2. Yeah, I think that we've come to that point in Valorant Esports where, you know, all five players are using the same weapons. Like, yeah. everyone yeah. needs to be able to frag out yep. and, like, do their job and hold their role. So yeah. it's very important coming from the leader. Yeah, there's no, at this point now, it's like with, with the level of play and also how competitive this region has been, it, it's like you, there can't be any slouches out there. So Valen stepping up when they needed to, definitely massive. But here's actually what Valen had to say about that win in our Verizon post-match interview. Let's check it out. Um, I mean, I'm just really proud of the team. Like, we went through a lot of adversity the last couple weeks, you know, picking up Icy, who's a rookie, and he's been integrated in the system really well. Um, as you can see, he's very aggressive, and he takes those timings on Duelist. So... He, he's the unsung hero of this new roster because I, he's making a lot of space for the team. Like, he's so selfless. He goes in with the utility. He usually gets his one. And from there, you just lets the rest of us shine. You know, I think one of the things, Shaz, that stood out to me when they were talking about him was Icy and his role and the job and what he does and how good he is at taking space. So I wanted to take this opportunity for you and I to nerd out a little bit about some of the perhaps maybe nuances of Lotus, but I think answering the why. So I want us to take a close look at Icy here and what he does to open the round and really just kind of pick your brain on this as mm -hmm. someone who's been playing the game for so long and is as knowledgeable as he is. So things start off and Icy immediately satches over uh, to half wall there and then they just kind of freeze. I feel like we see pro players and teams do that a lot, but why? why? What, what's the point of that? Yeah, so Lotus, A-Main control is very important. Every team, you know, will contest for A-Main at some point. Um, you're just controlling such a large part of the map. And so this is like an uncontested example. Mm. So you have Icy satcheling out the rubble, um, the Omen seeping to the front. Uh, it's very easy for the defense to just dump a bunch of util into the main and stop that control at all, insert someone into rubble. So the importance of like movement, Icy going in there, is that all you need to do is stay alive for his, the rest of his team to wait out the util, and then they can continue to take the space and take those fights if it's being contested. In this example, you know, it's all free, and it seems like they go straight into like an A split through tree. Um, and that might be like a protocol that, you know, if we're not being fought, let's commit to the site take immediately. Now, what does it do to the defense when you have an, a, a team on attack who's that's aggressively taking space right off the rip, not really giving any of that space up for free? Yeah, so on the defense, if they have control A main, they're just like one step ahead of the attack. You know, mm. they're, they're going to be able to stack and rotate ahead and know where the site's hitting. Now they're spread a bit thin. You know, there's the option of going through breakable. There's the option of committing to an A or even just going back. And it, they're more of a like guessing game on their back feet. And so I think as we continue to run this clip forward, we see how things play out. You mentioned that it feels like they're going to just go through a split A. They smoke off stairs, and it really felt, Chaz, like because of the early protocols, they just had so much more room to breathe. Ultimately, they end A, but you're right. They could have, in theory, gone anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, everything seems to be rehearsed. You know, everyone knows, like, what they're supposed to do if they're going into this. And you see Icy just go straight into the back of site, ready to clear out everything and hold a retake or flood. Now, you often, when you talk about duelists and you talk about them taking space, it's often fireworks and it's exciting and, you know, kills and blah, blah, blah. But really, what what is the value in a duelist taking space when it yeah. comes to especially a hit like that with Icy satcheling backside and things like that? Yeah, you know, they're the ones that are opening up the round for your team. You know, everyone else has a certain role. They're setting up Util and stuff. And kind of them, they're the ones scaling in, ready to take an engagement and have their team follow up. Um, you know, they have to be fearless and, like, kind of just trust that their teammates are going to do the job for them. And I think the, the last question I want to ask you very quickly as we see the round uh, kind of close out is, again, obviously with the duelists, you're hoping you get kills, you're hoping you get entries, you're getting your ones, as Valen so eloquently put, but would you say that there's a lot more value, especially on a three-site map, especially on a site exec, on just taking the space, on occupying space and creating that fill for your team? Yeah, no, 100%. Um, they, they need to take opportunities when they have them. Even if he's necessarily not getting the first kill, it, it's not, that's not all it is, you know? It's not just the engagement.
Well, and I think one of the things is, as we talk about Icy in his debut is this was the only map we saw him play a duelist on. And the attack side, admittedly, when it came to stats, was a, a little weak. But mm -hmm. he did create a lot of space, as we saw here. And I think when you think about how that plays out looking into the future, is that something you're looking out more for, for G2 as a roster? Are they okay with that? Does he need to start delivering in frags? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think right now he's probably just getting comfortable. But you can see everyone else like with the space he's making, everyone else looks extremely comfortable. Everyone knows what they want to do and the team looked great. Um, I think for him, maybe he, as he gets more reps on the role um, with you know the team and matches and stuff, it's going to look even better. GB, I'd love to bring yeah. you and Wyatt back in on this because Hi. I think oh, come on over. We, <laughs> I think it, it'll what? be really interesting to watch how G2 do this because as we were talking about earlier, uh, Icy played um, Gecko on Icebox. They only played one map that was Duelist on, so you wonder if things go heavy towards Duelist maps yeah. where there's a lot of rays, where he needs to be able to deliver in that role. I think there's still a lot of questions to be answered for, for Icy and for G2. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be really fascinating. Why? I mean, you know, we'll see what G2 can do, but it does feel like, uh, at the very least, they're, they're coming up with ideas, they're trying to implement this new player into it in an effective manner, and so far, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean... G2, at the moment, I have no reason to doubt them heading into yeah. this. They were playing well at kickoff. They played their best game last week. No, Jury, jury's no still No reason to doubt them right now. But again, yeah, we're so early in the season, like all these teams. You kind of now, the, we're used to overreacting. And I want to overreact. You want to overreact? I, I, I want to overreact to there news. was one result last week. But, you know, realistically, let's be smart, guys. Surely, we let's, don't, we let's don't overreact and, to the one match they played. Why don't we overreact for the next one, then? How about that? Who is it? Get, we're What's talking, We're talking about 100 Thieves. Oh, Everyone... then I will overreact. <laughs> 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 There's one team to overreact about. I was waiting for Perfect. that one. All right, we'll move on to 100 Thieves, then. Now, this is a team that I think it goes without saying. They need a dub on the board. We talk yeah. about teams that aren't winless, that struggle to pick up those wins. 100 Thieves have not won a best of three since May of 2023, and Oh, that's a long ass time. <laughs> I mean, listen, the, the the dedicated parasocial fans of this team are holding on to their cope by a thread. And that last thread is, well, they've only played against Sentinels twice. They played Lev close. Let's see what happens when they play a different team. They're going against G2. Surely this is a winnable game. I mean, it is a winnable game. So if they lose here, but that's it. The cope is all gone. It's it's over. It's over for the fans. They'll have yeah. had enough with this team. This is their chance to prove that, like, all right, they're at least going to be, like, upper mid-table here, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, Shazam, I want to bring you in on this. What's your, like, surface level, what's your read on this 100 Thieves team based on what we've seen and, you know, maybe even information that you may have? Yeah, I feel like not only do they need a big one, they just need a one in general. Like, um, it's crew status real, real quick, you know? Yeah, they're, they're having some... I don't know, they're swapping around the roles in some maps, and you can tell, like, from one map, a lot of people look comfortable in their roles, and the next map, it's swapped around, and things look disconnected. People are hesitating, and, yeah. uh, you know, it's something they need to figure out or just keep it consistent throughout. Yeah, yeah. If, if I may, to, you know, continue to inject a little bit of, of cope, I think Cryo, at least on map one, oh, uh, yeah. last weekend, looked incredible. He looked confident. He looked like the duelist that everyone's been hoping and wanting to see out of him for, what, years uh, yeah. At this point, and I think there's a lot of conversation to be had around translating from chamber to a primary jet duelist and, you know, creating space like that. It's a, it's a very different role. I it think is. what's being asked of you is, is drastically different. I think for Cryo, at least on Icebox, that felt like a, a breath of fresh air. That felt very different from what we had seen for the past what, yeah. year and change? Yeah, I'm actually really glad you mentioned that as well because we do have Geek Heavy. You got an opportunity to speak with Cryo to get his thoughts heading into this matchup. Here they are. Cryo, right over here, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Now, I got to ask you, how comfortable do you feel in this current meta? Uh, pretty comfortable. I mean, I get to play Jet on a few maps, Controller on a few maps, so, yeah. Yeah. I think you're going to kill it today, man. How are you feeling? Confident? Hella confident. All right, let's do it. Good luck, man. Crow's feeling confident, and he's feeling confident with the meta. Well, let's go ahead and continue the conversation on Cryo. As he had mentioned, he got to play the Jet, also play a little bit of Controller too. Wyatt, uh, it, it does feel like Cryo, you know, you're always going to have your attention focused on him because of the player and the caliber of player that he is. It's a lot of pressure for him. He was brought into the team because it seemed like this massive, obvious duelist upgrade, but it just didn't really pan out as intended for 100 Thieves, at least yet. 
It was really good to see him specifically, though, in that game. He was dominating on Icebox as Jet with a rifle, because when he has had dominant games with 100 Thieves, it's they switch to defense, they win the pistol, he gets an off, and he just carries the entire half. That's how they were getting a lot of wins last year when they were getting wins. So I'm just looking for him to keep this up as a duelist with a rifle. Mm. Well, I think part of the issue, too, is, you know, we saw highlights from the Icebox game and how good he looked and loose and confident and updrafting and knives and whatnot. But then we turned over to Split, and it, it looked like a different player in a lot of ways. I think the transition, and this kind of goes back to the conversation we were having earlier, transitioning from a duelist role to a controller role, what's being asked of you is very different. And I think Cryo almost was like punished by the success that he had on mm. Icebox because he's feeling it, right? Like he almost dropped 30. He may have dropped 30 on Icebox. I don't remember. He was close with it. And then he transitioned over to this Astro role and it looked like he was trying to take a lot of aggressive fights and he was trying to swing with confidence because he was feeling it, but it wasn't translating the same way. Yeah. 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 Go for definitely it, like on Icebox, I think we saw him the most aggressive he's been in a long time and it looked really good. It's what they need. But then on Icebox, a split immediately, he's on Astra and like he's hesitating. He's... He's in the smoke. He doesn't know if he should take space and yeah. fight B main or if he should, you know, back up and play for the retake. Um, Do you think there's really value in keeping someone focused on, like, especially with the circumstances 100 Thieves find themselves in, keeping people kind of focused on roles rather than, like, being completely flexible? Do you think the meta just doesn't allow that right now? Um, I think there's a balance. You know how we saw Demon once with Sheree's on split for the first yeah. time? Like... You can definitely do that, and I think Cryo's a player that kind of needs that. He could have carried over that momentum from Icebox into Split, yeah. while on Astra, you know, he was very restricted, and it yeah. was really obvious. Yeah, it's just, uh, of course, uh, you know, when you think about this 100 Thieves lineup, you got a lot of different weapons that can come into play here, but another player as well that stands out, Bustio, who, you know, uh, again, strong kickoff, but kind of the opposite of, of what happened to uh, Valen, where, like, Valen was seeing a lot of output that week. Bustio, on the other hand, not finding what he wanted in that week one matchup, Doug, and you're really going to be hoping to see Busio step it up this time around. Yeah, I think to roll back the clock even further, you go back to their Tokyo run when he was on EG, he was leading from the front, and yeah, you had a lot of pieces with you there. Calm was having his big moments, Demon 1 was what? Demon 1, but Busio had really big moments. He was dueling, he was popping off as a sentinel. A lot of clutches, yeah. Yeah, he had some really massive moments, and I think it continued into champs, maybe not to the same degree, uh, but we just haven't seen that. We haven't seen that since, and this felt this past weekend felt like the worst performance we've seen out of Bustio in a really long time. And I think for him to succeed and for the team to succeed, I think there's a lot of value in him. Obviously, the the, the benefit that he provides from a calling role, the uh, motivational uh, aspect that he plays into things, but I also think he's at his best when he's when he's popping off a little bit, right? Like when he's delivering frags, and that was just, I mean, he was a complete shadow of the player we've grown to love since yeah. last year. Yeah, that's that's tough. Uh, yeah, when you're talking about that, I mean, that is a lot of pressure to put on this one guy that he has to solve so much with this team from yeah. being yeah. IGL to also the mental side of the game because they're just, they were at least such an unconfident team. And so you're looking at him, the hype man of EG, to try and, and like rectify that at least yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, and I, I mean, specifically, I think in comparison to Valen in the last week, Bustio was definitely playing a lot more. Uh, set up for 100 Thieves than Valen, especially like sure, sure. on Icebox in that comp that uh, G2 run where Valen is the omen. He's basically like a duelist. So yeah. he has way more opportunities to get kills because they don't run a duelist with that comp. And like he's getting flashes from the KO and that kind of thing. Yeah. Where on Split, Bustio is like pretty much pure gecko setup and their game plan was just failing. So yeah, I mean, it's just tough for him to find opportunities to look decent on on that map in those circumstances yeah um, but i mean yeah you're definitely looking for him individually to turn it around because historically he's been individually great igling no matter what role really so yeah he has to be leveling up i mean that was his worst performance in like I, yeah and we'll, i can't remember the last time we'll have to see if it carries through till today of course but uh that's going to be a problem for future us to talk about current us we're going to have a little fun here because before we start week two, it's time to play a little game. And you guys at home get to play too. It's agree to disagree. That's right. Everyone loves a good argument on the internet, right? Nothing bad could possibly go wrong there. Everyone should have their, their thumbs, their up thumbs, and their down thumbs. We almost okay. Didn't uh, now, <laughs> I'm going to read a statement, all right? And, and you use your thumbs, all right, to vote. Now, Twitch chat, you guys get to participate as well in well okay so make sure you guys go ahead and do your thing spam yes or no for our next question so here is the first one hundred thieves have been unlucky they're stronger than last year agree to disagree fellas 
how do we feel? And the chat will pop up here in a little bit too. I mean, is there like a neither? I don't know. I'm just all agree, just like sideways? but like. Bare, I'll like barely agree, at least so far. Barely agree? Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, I, I'll agree, yes, but uh, I don't, I'm not <laughs> thrilled that I agree. Uh, it's a begrudging, like, I think this is the truth, of the mild truth. The mild <laughs> like, truth. Shazam, what about you? Yeah, I think I'm going to agree, too, just slightly. Okay. Um, I think it is an improvement. Uh, I think Boostio for sure is an upgrade. But, uh, you know, we just haven't seen it then become more than, like, the sum of their units yet. So, mild truth. It feels wrong agreeing just because it's a first question, right? Like, we can't all just agree. But, unfortunately, I, I kind of have to. I, 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 yeah, <laughs> I kind of do agree. And I, I will say another thing is they've had some, some you know, go back to Cope. They've had some pretty insane draws. Right? They've played Sentinels twice. They've mm -hmm. played Leviathan. I think it's hard to say that Bustio isn't an improvement, and I think Cryo continues to look more comfortable. So, yes, this may be Cope. But Least coped up 100 Thieves fan right here. <laughs> like, I'm like, I mean, I'm, yeah, I guess. It's I'm, like a halfway. It's like a mitting. <laughs> more like mitting result. There he goes. <laughs> trying to do it. All right. Uh, here's another one. Leviathan will finish stage one under oh. .500 so below 0.500 record, meaning they will go negative on the record this season. How many matches do they play? Uh, uh, five, <laughs> five total. Five total. Five total. So they would have to be two and two and three, right? And I they think. play. They still play energy G2 and crew. So oh, I was. I, easy, I mean, yeah, easy to agree. Then. Easy to agree. They're like max two and three. Max two and three. Yeah. Okay, you yes. know what? I'm, I'm gonna, max two and three. I'm gonna believe. I'm gonna believe in Leviathan. Who are you okay, yeah, I don't give, know. I, you gotta explain the why. Because <laughs> the why? Listen, hope. All right, uh, uh, dreams. Uh, I don't know. Hope. Just whatever. Okay, I'm just hope. trying to. Act. <laughs> he obviously hasn't been betrayed enough and doesn't have no trust I have not. I have uh, not throughout been. life, dude. I would love to. Be <laughs> <laughs> I would love to believe. I, I would. And I think when this roster got put together, we talked about it at the beginning. I was like, this team's gonna win a lot. It makes a lot of sense. Aspas is still Aspas. King is an absolute freak. Khan's going to do his thing, but it, it really doesn't feel like this is coming together. So and what you, you got? mentioned, uh, yeah, I, I agree. Okay, Unfortunately, agree. and I think when you think about who else they're playing, uh, and there are no free wins. Are you agreeing as well, Shazam? Yeah, I'm going to have to agree. Um, okay. Stacked roster on paper, but they just seem so disconnected from each other in the games we've seen. Yeah. And the teams they're about to play, I just I don't see them figuring out in time. We gotta believe somehow. We gotta, we gotta put some hope out there. Okay, this last one's a good one. Oh my. The 2021 <laughs> Sentinels can beat the 2024 Sentinels roster. Do you agree or disagree? I'm and I think we'll shave, save Shaz Shazam for the end there. Wait, what's like, hold on, just. Okay, so Do like you them think at the their 2021 peak, Sentinels. Them at their can peak beat? versus this team at their peak. Sure. It's like the idea. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. He's right there, so this is... Doug, take it away. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, you disagree? disagree. I disagree. Oh, oh I disagree. he's right there. This is entirely intended <laughs> to be inflammatory. <laughs> just, just so everyone knows. Okay. I'm trying to stir the pot. Why Here's it's a thing. failure. So he didn't give us one. At least Doug gave us something. I, th I think this... I'm using my mind, I, GB. I think Allow this, me to this use combo it. of Zekin and Tens right now are... The, one of the best duos we've we've ever seen in Valorant. I think Zekin sure, just yeah. continues to get more confident. He continues to get more comfortable. Tens has found where he needs to fit in the grand scheme of things. John is calling out of his mind. I, I think the game has also changed so much from 2021 up until now. Where I think the it, I think it would be a, a tough sell. It's kind of like does LeBron beat Jordan? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Uh, I Shazam. Think yes. What about yeah, you? Yeah, I'm gonna disagree as well. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, it's it's just the nature of sports and esports. You know, to win a tournament, you have to be the best team at that current time. Yeah. I don't think there's any pretending that the game has evolved. The yeah. intricacies matter more, and uh, that's what we were. We were the best team at that time period, and okay. now this current Sentinels is the best team at this time period in a much more evolved game. Okay. Ooh. Okay. okay. I mean, if we're doing the time period thing, that's an easy. Yeah. Then this, disagree. This but feels if, like a massive if, cop out. If we read it. No, I mean, if we're well, if we're doing the time period thing, of course it's disagree. It's been yeah. three years. Like, yeah, you wow. think you that's know. a long time ago? Yeah, yeah I mean, I it's, been, it's been a long yeah. time. Like they're a little bit better than the players three years ago. Okay. I mean, you have tens versus tens with three more years of experience. <laughs> yeah, like, tens, ten clears tens. So, <laughs> All right, that's an easy disagree. All right, that's that's well there you have it, it, folks. You heard from the crew. Now uh, we only got a minute left, and uh, we'll dive into some uh, predictions here. I, I think I know where where you guys are going, but uh, here's a bigger one. If hundred thieves were to pull off the win, 
where would that come from? Where do you guys, do you feel like it can be a 2-0 or have to be a 2-1? Like we're going to three of 100 threes, pick up a dub, or is this just going to be G2, 2-0, and that's it? I mean, it depends on the maps we're going to. Okay. I, I okay. am going to go with 100 thieves barely. Oh, like, you're going with 100 the, thieves? The barely 2-1 victory. Wow. Okay, did not see that one coming. Shazam. Yo, I'm biased here, so... Con G contractually obligated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, G2, 2-0, and my cope is that, you know, if we lose, that, um, you know, we're implementing a new player. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, we're working out correct. the kinks. <laughs> All right, that works right. well for you, Doug. Uh, I think I, I agree with Wyatt. It goes down to maps uh, in a big way. I think if the maps lean a certain way where Cryo can continue to play in these comfortable roles, it'll go well. All right, well, you heard from the desk. Now it's time to get started for week two. G2 versus 100 Thieves. Sentinels versus Leviathan. VCT America starts right now. As he swings in, there's that first kill. A second one, easily done. Prowess it is the center. Oh. Green tag! Pacquiao with four! I think we're feeling very confident after this first week. Just confident. Don't really care about what they're doing. Just focus on what we're doing. The forces EG to have to try to plant safely. But Valen's still around the corner. And Valen And watches his back. You know, 100 Thieves is, like, good individually. But I think they're just going to be... A very like swarm team like they, they'll try to catch you off guard and stuff like that they're very aggressive by nature he's in pickings right now for bang and they're running circles around sentinels right now i see you first came on stage so a little rough for him but pretty good player he was doing really good in um, the eg academy team uh last year he can play a lot of roles he's not a superstar we're not expecting him to be we're not expecting him to drop 40 we're not expecting him to drop 30. we want to play more as like a team and stuff like that and he really helps us um, play our roles better. Riot Games Arena! We got ourselves an NA showdown. And your first team headed to the stage. Make some noise for 100 Thieves! Headed to the stage. Yeah, Give it up G2. for G2. A newcomer, we've been up for several summers seeking how to step in commas. If you with us, buy the bundle. Say you should buy the bundle. Barely time to buy the bundle for this ton of errors, rumble. Cause you know we titans in this game, ain't no contest. If we take it to the game, turn a wild west. We ain't fake it with our claim, it's a wild threat. No rope, we've been a vet. Now check the mindset by the name of G2. How to take over the world, how we come through. You just follow in the herd, we don't have to. Let's forget about what you heard, probably ain't true. Both of these teams looking for a big win here today for 100 Thieves. It'd be the first BO3 win that they've picked up in a long time. And G2 Esports does not want to be the ones to give it to them. And for G2, this is a team that's continuously trying to find their identity with the inclusion of Icy and Doug. We see our maps laid out. We're going to go to Bind, Split, and if necessary, we'll be taking a trip to the frozen tundra of Icebox. Yeah, I, I think my immediate response to that as I look at how things play out is there's a really good chance we're going to see Cryo on Controller. We're going to see Asuna on Rays, and that's going to be some of how they decide to approach this. And I think it, it's, a, it's a really tough situation to be in because Asuna's an insane race. Like, his raise is, is really good. I just wonder what that dynamic is because, again, if there's a lot of success dependent on Cryo being comfortable and doing his thing, 
it's going to be hard for him to do that from a different role other than the go button. Yeah, I agree. Um, but maybe it work, might work differently this time around with Austin starting on Raze and Kraus okay. starting on a more restricted role. Mm. And then if it goes to third map, you know, he's playing the jet and he's ready to just, like, take the wolves. Yeah, yeah. Where, where do you see, I mean, with the series layout the way that it is, Wyatt, what are your thoughts regarding how this plays out for your prediction of 100 Thieves squeaking by a win? Split was really bad for them last week against Sen, but typically that's been one of their better maps that they've been able to rely on to get at least, I mean, they lose so many 2-1s, and a lot of the time Split is the map that they won. Bind in one of those scenarios, that was a map they won against Sen and Kickoff. Like, I think this pool is actually pretty good for them. Like, all three maps are pretty good. This is reasonable for them to get a win. Like, G2 on, on Bind for sure. Not really idea what they're going to have to, to bring here. Well, yeah. and, and I think that goes back to the conversation we were having earlier because there's a lot on Icy's shoulders here. Mm -hmm. Assuming he is going to be playing Duelist, those are two maps where he's going to have to be playing the race. He's going to have to be creating space. Yes, it was a really small sample size last week and he created some space and got his ones, whatever, but he's going to have to deliver here because there's a lot more on his shoulders. Yeah, indeed there is. And Agent Select's going to be coming up here in a moment as we see what our players are going to be looking to roll with here as we get ready for this series. High pressure situations in and we say high pressure because it's a short stage <laughs> you yeah. only got a few games so every single match every single map counts and matters here uh so when you got those things that you need to fix those wrinkles that you need to iron you don't have a lot of time to do it yeah so. I, I think with shanghai just being around the corner i think that's bad that's the aspiration and that's a goal for any of these teams so you're right gb i think there's a it's a little bit longer than kickoff, so maybe the stakes don't feel as high pressure, but the truth is every single week matters. And I think when you've got two rosters who are still trying to figure out their identity and think about how they want to develop themselves and how they want to build moving forward, I think this match, yes, it's just week two, matters a ton. We're still back on that uh, Gecko again. So we've seen him on that, as we were talking about before, the primary setup duty that we come to expect from him. Uh, and, you know, nothing really crazy as far as the agent draft is concerned. But I think this just does give us an opportunity, though, to continue to harp on this conversation we're going to see, right? Why between the two duelists? That is going to be a big point of this matchup. Icy's got a lot of work ahead of him. Against Asuna, who historically has been an incredible raise, but is like the player under the most community scrutiny at the moment. He has just become the lightning rod for all 100 Thieves fan frustration that he's just not oh. I mean, consistent enough oh, on that yeah. agent. Yeah, they're actually opting for the Yoru or G2. But I think on these maps, because you're going to be seeing Asuna duelist, duelist back to back. You, I mean, I know the fans are going to be looking at him to step up and go crazy, and I am too. And I know he can do it on the race. He's done it here plenty times before. Yeah, well, this is going to be awesome. Looking forward to this one. The Yoru pick's going to be fun to see how that one plays out. We'll, of course, see what Asuna can do here against a game and ready G2. But we're ready for map, map number one. Excuse me. Brings me great joy to send it to these two catchers. It's Mimi and Ender. Thanks very much, GV. Yes, we have a good one on our hands, Christy. 100 Thieves, the supposed North American super team, yet to pick up a win with this new roster. Today's the make or break. It absolutely is, especially going into Bind, which is their map. This is a map that they beat Sentinels on back at kickoff 13-6. Looked very strong on that one. And it's against a G2. They just came off a big win themselves versus EG last week. And for 100 Thieves, even though they lost that debut, I think we saw some good things from this team. This is a squad that has been improving for quite a while, but has big expectations to live up to. Yes, they do. They had the, the group of death they had to work through. Still mixed opinions on whether they're going to be able to bounce back after that one. But now they're going against a crazy comp on the other side. I see coming in this second week on this G2 roster, busting up the solo Yoru. That's some, not something you see every day. No, pretty rare Watching composition smoke. here. Ballin ahead of his smoke to start here. Great flash setup, but it's just one for one. No one's over on that B side, though. 100 Thieves are taking it slow for the time being, but it's a massive stack from G2 over on this A side. 100 Thieves is not looking to commit just yet. Spike left back in market, just hunting down, seeing if they can find a pick or something like this. But G2 are going to be happy to play heavy A, push out of that shower's angle, and get a massive flank going over towards B. Bang going to re-clear, peeks into three, and goes down. G2, gain advantage, it'll be a quick rotation towards B. Yeah, 100 Thieves need to heat up now over into that B site. Still not entirely sure where this Viper is. Most He's down. hanging out over on the A site for the time being, so they've got to clear out Octagon down towards Long, get this plant off, but without very much forward space. They're going to be playing primarily off site, I think, in this post plant. G2 have a great combo ready, the haunt and the flash. 
Make this retake a little easier. But 100 Thieves will fight into Elba. Getting active with it. The big engagement is going to come if 100 Thieves push back into CT. Now that the smoke has faded, they can look for their timing on that angle. EU, tight corner. Knife Man. is up. He's got hits. A quick retreat. Odds now even in this one, and timer's starting to tick here. Two players towards elbow, one towards long. Leaf is trying to hold it halfway. He's just sticking onto this one. Swing just coming in time. It's one for one. Where are Haunt up. One it tags one. one. Cryo perfect on the swing. The last man standing is dealt with. 100 Thieves. An excellent post plant to start. That's how you want to kick it off right there. 100 Thieves come in with good post plant and two better to start it off, right? You got Cryo, who looked insane back on the jet last week. Now he's back in his smokes prison, but still finding the kills. And EU with the 3K. The last time he played against this guard core on G2 was in the Ascension Finals, losing that one three to one. But now a little chance to, to win back here on the main stage of ECT. And he struggled there. The, the bottom fragger in that series, the elimination, the end of his season. A chance for great revenge in this match. G2 are actually going for the massive stack again over towards this B site. Something that was very characteristic of G2 uh, during their whole kickoff run was their willingness to play heavy side and then full retake on the other. Their retakes looked very well drilled. This time again on the eco round, stacking five players ready for a full trap in hookah. But uh, 100 Thieves, they've got themselves going fully down towards long, so not trying to run into that. Calling on this exact. Smoke will go towards Tuka. It's a question of, does G2 flood? Flash ready to go. They'll hop on out. Haunt broken, but 100 Thieves dealing with this one very well. The trades are clean, and I see they'll find at least two in that one. So a bit of damage, but no round to come of it. Makes it a little messy. Still two Vandals carried over from 100 Thieves. That's good preview, though, I think, of how a lot of these rounds are going to play off, right? Because with all this utility 100 Thieves have for their set execs, the, the Dizzy flying over the top, you've got the, the Haunt that's going to be a difficult thing to break as well, the Mosh that fully clears tube. G2 are going to want to play inside their smokes and then push into them. They wait out that Dizzy timing, go for that fight. On the pistols, getting three kills, not too shabby. I think the big question in this game for 100 Thieves is how good is their on-the-fly ideas? How good is the adaptation? Because we've seen these set plays be good, even against the best teams in the world, like Sentinels, even though they're losing those matches. We saw their AXX look very strong in the past. They've got five rifles on this third round. No bonus, and Asuna going quickly, diving back over towards Showers. IC gets the first kill and still looking for more. Flashed himself into the fight, and the spike has not been planted. It is a mess here on the A site as G2 continue picking up kills. Bang, the only player to try and equalize from back in U-Haul, but he's all on his own, pushing forward. G2 only lose one member. Stunning hold from G2 there. Holding onto Showers control with the comp like this is so pivotal, because when you're flooding back in, you can have Flashes from one side with players swinging from showers and from the other flooding backside. It's super effective. And let's talk comp for a second from G2. They're not playing a raise in the duo slot. They're playing this Yoru from Icy. He's getting those kills. And then that means they have another source of flashes on this side of the map. So he can keep fighting remain. forward in showers. They've also got KO flashes over towards B long. They can fight very actively on both sides of the map. Yeah, you saw in that retake, it was a combo of the haunt and that Yoru flash to win out. Early TP play, some Yoru shenanigans. No Actually ended up walking all the way into the corner, sounding like a clone. The TP's out the same. 100 Thieves going fast into U-Haul. Trent has to retreat, but crucially, Shower's control again maintained for G2. I think 100 Thieves want to slow things down for the time being. They've got full control over U-Haul. Where do they want to go? Still hard to break through this once the wall yeah. goes down, then a second cycle of a brimstone smoke. 100 Thieves are taking their time as the rear clear comes into you. Great shot out of bang. Just sits him down. And they'll continue playing slow off of that for 100 Thieves. Leaf, though, takes his opportunity and finds one. G2 still have a lot of utility to fight back in with the flashes once I hear that tap. 100 Thieves are waiting for the next cycle on this viper wall going down before it, at least faking a tap on this plant. Haunt over the back, doesn't see too much. They fake it on through, but G2 haven't gone for the swing yet. Notice Trent's position fully flashed up behind Triple and putting down volleys as clock continues to dwindle away. This delay is ridiculous. G2 swing at the perfect times, cut down a. for a double. Under Thieves will trade back, but they just can't get that plant well, under control. Trent's enemy. ahead of it, and they've taken care of the hit yet again. Lovely discipline by G2. And 100 Thieves just kind of getting like stuck that? in that area for too long. You know, they were hoping by waiting a little bit more time, maybe they threatened there could be a lurk going up into B, maybe we can TP over onto that side of the map. 
and G2 won't go for the hard stack on A, but they're not familiar with G2's game. G2 are very happy, just leave that one player over towards B, get this heavy stack, and win yet another fight. Heavy playing from backside. Five down. One enemy remaining. Survivors rest. You're Walt, the first to come online here for G2. You can combo a lot of ideas with that one. It's gonna be a fight towards long though. Dizzy broken. Do they wanna pop through? Just a haunt. It's excellent. Here. Asuna is down. That's a big player to lose early. 400 thieves. Yeah, I see Chuck in a flash into the mix as well. Comboing up some utility there, and 100 Thieves haven't been able to get any space anywhere on the map. Jonah P doing a great job of locking down a short with the knife. Very hard for Bang to lurk up with his wall when the second he throws that up for a few too many seconds, you've got a knife shutting you down and no space to be had. Yoru gate, gate crash ready to go. Rotate over towards this B site. And that's the other beautiful thing about this Yoru, is you always have three players. You're playing with six players effectively, three on each side of the map, thanks to that teleport. Unless 100 Thieves can find these windows to attack when that ability times out. Right there. There's my buddy. Is he recovered for boot seal? Yeah, they're trying to fake a two-phase hit into this area of the map. In five seconds, they could threaten to Dizzy, but the entire time, we're actually working over into that B site. 2-2 two -two split for the time being, but G2 have not flinched. They've still got Valen and Trent here to hold. That's a great mauling. Players towards long gonna be stalled. First wave left. of utility in, and no one's even past the start line. Second wave initiated. 100 Thieves fight forward. Boostio for a double. It's 3v3, but Icy straighted out. Trent fighting his time sways through the smoke and falls, and his teammates gone too. Down to one. Spike planted. And he's going fast, Leaf. Backside. A Viper world. spit in front of him. Molly and a tap on the spike. Leaf spamming, but. Bang's gun's better. Yeah, Bang just follows those tracers straight through the pit. Gets the easy kill. That was a, a really solid round from 100 Thieves. We saw yet again G2 trying to flood out of every smoke, but 100 Thieves, their fundamentals were very strong. Even after losing that first player, they're holding every single smoke. So even a guy like Jonah stepping through that, players jumping through elbow as well. They shut it down. This gecko gives Busio so many options as an IGL, having those cycles back online every 10 seconds. It's the reason they made that call happen. And Thrash is now available. EU and Cryo not far off their old side. They're going fast up into Buka here, jumping out and escaping is Jonah P. But they can reclaim that one relatively easily from inside Hookah, especially now that the smoke goes down. At 15 seconds in the round, getting two Brimstone smokes is a huge, huge win. But look how many alts G2 have. They're really comfortable to just flood retake off that utility. And you can combo things, right? Nightfall with Icy popping out. He's gotten ult. ahead of Bang, I think. He is all the way out from showers. Toxins going up. But does he want to keep going? It feels like he's maybe leading a walk back over in the A site, so he doesn't want to keep hunting too far ahead. Boys and orb the position he's in right now is absolutely gorgeous. Thrash isn't done with you! It's a fake over into that B side for now. Thrash dealt with fast, and whoa, look at that! Ultimate used, Asuna sort of abandoned on site. Valen swings and gets the kill. And we're now in a five on four situation from G2. You still have that lurk going on all the way back from short. You also have this gate crash. That's a fast rotation. Leaf activated. Boostio walking Spike up. Planted. It's a game of timings. And Leaf misses his chance. Now a lot harder to make this retake happen. 4v4. Still a Yoru to work with. It'll be a flash out from heaven. Haunt front site. Boostio will reply with a wave of his own, but Icy wins it over Bang. Trade is good. And time is ticking. Trent flashed off the line yet again. Boostio ready to fight for more. The IGL gets a second. Now 2v2. Spike tapped for the first time. EU decayed, and they know that G2's off, but have to find it. They can't Timing, hear it. They're deafened. They can't One hear it. Damn thing, but Trent swings at the right time. Boostio! He reigns it in. Finds the spray just in time. And the leader wins the round for 100 Thieves. The only way he's going to win that one with the wide swing. Taking down the planter first with the diffuser. Rather. And I mean, what a what a demonic round here. We've got ults on, ults used over towards this B site. Because G2 really did think it was going to be that B exact. But then Busio going on the late lurk, dealing with the walk up from the other side. Somehow it all works out in the end. Running out of bullets, just heartbreaking. But even then, there was no time. Boy, you guys are nice. 
Busio getting the vibes up early. Big win condition for 100 Thieves. I got you. As G2's money's gonna be reset. Down to an eco here. Yet another round where G2 are heavy stacked over here. We've got a flash ready to go. Low buy, but actually Icy comes around the corner. No flash necessary. Maybe a second one just to get him out of that angle. G2 win another fight down long and find themselves with another numbers lead. And look at this setup in Hookah. All five players are for that is of 100 Thieves stuck out towards long. We'll try and make this hit happen. Bang is seized. The util is just so good from G2 to delay, but can they follow it up with a kill? Not quite. Wingman going in and gets his mission done. Plant wheel come down and bang. Ahead of where Trent expects him. It's a big kill in that one. Now the players flooding out are taken down. 100 Thieves again maintaining good control of this round. Just a matter of recovering that spike and closing the deal. Busio's got to do it himself at the very end. Poor Wings got cut down right at the last second. But 100 Thieves are showing some of that strength that, that we saw from them during kickoff on this map. G2, now a chance to call a timeout. Still got that Yoru ult to deal with if they want to. And I do have to shout out Icy because he's been able to find a couple of critical kills. I think last week was not putting up the numbers that you'd necessarily want from him, but it was also his first time on the stage here with G2. Yeah, I remember the hype for this guy. We didn't see him in officials, but he was scrimming with EG Reserve and people were talking about him dropping 30, dropping 40 in scrims. G2 saying the expectation is for him to be more of a team player, kind of meld in with Leaf being the second entry. But if he's having games like this, I mean, you need a guy like that to show up. Yeah, also, sorry, but I, I don't want a player that's just going to go get space. I feel like that's G2 propaganda. And really, this guy is going to be so sick, maybe needs a little bit of time, but I feel like they're just trying not to set expectations I think it's good propaganda for him, right? It's His good teammates propaganda. aren't going to be like, yeah, he's going to come out here and he's going to dominate. No, they're setting reasonable expectations. They're setting him up as a team player. And if he does more, that's amazing. And yeah. he'll probably evolve into it. I've got news. He's busting out the up in this round. Out of the timeout, that's going to be the call for him. And one of the benefits, I think, to, to taking a Yoru as opposed to a raise on this map, I think the Yoru TP a little bit more reliable in terms of that get out of jail free when you are going for some sure. op shots. Not as strong as a jet dash, perhaps, or a chamber, but it gives you a little bit more flexibility to go for these early lines. He's going to be posted up inside of showers, looking for that forward line quickly into this round. Change his mind. No operator. All that for nothing. No. Why do I even bother? <sighs> Haunt here. You. No flash to combo it. It doesn't catch anything. Actually, a C's ult committed. It's fast into the site. Asuna over the top rocket. Connects on to Trent. He's mollied from his own team. And there's still a player. A problem in the U-Haul. Hunter Thieves, though, winning every fight. Asuna, he's electric in the backside. That is 100 Thieves' classic A-short exec. Double ults go flying in, and Asuna gets all the way back underneath heaven. Even after getting that first kill, G2 not anticipating him playing right on the outside of the smoke. I love that idea from him, especially right as G2 tried to flood into the site. I love these pace chains from 100 Thieves thus far. These guys have been throwing so many rounds where they're showing early pressure towards A main or towards B long with that first dizzy cycle, then doubling back, throwing these late rounds for fakes. And now they change up, go for a very classic 100 Thieves hard hit and own. They absolutely do. One save for Jonah P. That was coming. They had an eco round, the one before this, took the timeout, had some money for this one. Not looking so hot for the rest. And honestly, for G2, I, I was kind of liking the idea of taking the off and trying to fight more forward angles. Because it feels like the last few rounds, G2 have been heavy stacking one side of the map, playing for these trap ideas around Hookah, around B-Long, and then flooding out of smokes on the retake. They haven't been doing a lot of forward fighting. Apart from that round, they fought all the way down on B-Long. And Op could change that look somewhat, but I don't think that's really going to be the idea for G2 yet again. <laughs> Viper's pit committed towards a short, okay. but 100 Thieves again going back towards this B-Long default. How do they want to work back into this Viper's pit on short? They do have the thrash. The one tool to really get you through that pit. Leaf's movement is going to be so important here, though, because he's got the judge, so he cannot Boxes break thrash. Down. That's just not going to happen. So if he can somehow dodge out of his pit, get back into it, then he has a chance here. How fast right are the there. feet? I think they might want to wait. They've got two players in the shower scaling oh, yeah. up now. And now they can try to clear into the space. 
Ult committed and actually broken. I think a little bit of spam coming through, through there to help out Leaf. He's stuck towards the corner. Avoids every piece of Util thus far. Still spam coming in, but at this point, Hunter Thieves have no way to get through. 40 seconds, they're not going into B. They're grouping up over in showers now with four players. Maybe some late scouting from EU down on A short, and they can wait. They're not even gonna have a second cycle of the thrash because it got shot down. For G2, yeah. this round is on Icy. A position, top truck, Asuna, what an entry! The Yoru's down. It's only a judge for Leaf. This round becomes so difficult. This bank fights forward for more, and Leaf continues to find himself in trouble. Cryo's watching it. No chance in hell to escape his pit. Trent's caught the walk up on the flank. Being scouted out, but wins it with the Stinger. Still four players left alive. He's running down to pick up a rifle. The clock's just simply too low, though. They know it's over. G2 called the save. It's looking a bit dire for G2. Remember how their, their two maps versus EG started off, by the way. They won all four pistols in their series. They won three out of the four bonus rounds they played. Like, G2 was running away with games from the start. This is the first time post kickoff that we've seen them just getting slammed from the get-go. Yeah, that second map against EG, 13 to three. That's yeah. what they're coming off into this map. Hasana has been ridiculous to them. He, he's a guy who's often criticized for some of the inconsistency he can find switching around different roles. But when he is on, hundred thieves look legit. Icy's been sitting on this ult for so long now. G2, the rounds have been falling apart before they've even been getting those retakes underway. Maybe a chance to fight heavy down B long here. I'm seeing Icy, I'm seeing Trent playing with each other. Maybe another look at a flash combo with a haunt to pick someone off B long, but... 100 Thieves aren't geared up in that area. That's what they looked for. Icy did spend that flash, but they didn't see anything. And now I think 100 Thieves might want to scale back into that space, right? They're grouping up to maybe work down into long here, leaving Hookah abandoned. And maybe even reading that Icy, after throwing that flash, has leaned over into this A side of the map. Because whenever Icy's been playing on B, it's usually been playing up in that cubby, so the Dizzy would have seen that. Now we've actually got that Yoru coming back over into the B site. And 100 Thieves can get this take underway. Again, good molly to stall from G2. That'll cancel out this first wave. But Asuna, double satchels in the second wave there. of utility ready to set him up. Oh, pops. Icy's gonna go forward into this one. Scouts out information, but they're trying to get ahead of him. 100 Thieves fighting into the site. Asuna caught on the entry, and Icy now an issue behind them. They can't hear. That's a haunt committed, as well as the Nightfall and Valent fighting forward for three. The leader steps up when he's needed. It's a flawless round G2. I think Trent's got to be the hero in that round. First of all, he gets the kill on Asuna from atop the ticket, but that unlocked the Nightfall. Nightfall comes out immediately, and in the chaos of not being able to hear anything, being decayed, playing off of his own haunt there to get that kill. That was so nicely done from him. And you see that decay so critical. All these kills, body shots for yeah. Valen. But it's enough with that decay, with the haunt. Lovely combo. But that's the difference. Trent gets that first kill against Asuna, unlocks the ult. The previous rounds, Asuna's been getting into sight and always winning out in those openers. So a bit of a break for G2. Still two left in the half, a chance to salvage this to a 5-7. They showed this once before. Fake clone that's actually a real Yoru into the teleport, but he can always TP out. Flashbang. Cool. Nice shot by Jonah. All connects onto a kill, though, but that's good damage. And but the Yoru in the KO retreat. Yeah, we just sent a Prowler down a short that saw absolutely nothing. So I think G2 are now grouping up to maybe fight more forward into B long. They are expecting the B lean now from 100 Thieves. And the few times 100 Thieves have gone B, it's been heavy through long every time. Jonah makes contact and 100 Thieves are just gonna walk up on this one dizzy ready to pop through the smoke icy is so blind no tp to get out of this one but just in time he arrives jonah still in the smoke though maybe wants to make another go of this one icy has a flash to set him up if they want to go for this one ult committed fight oh, oh, oh. two shot down before they can escape through the teleporter it's gonna be an attempt for a pivot though this entire round would hinge on Bang. If Bang on A short was able to find some kind of a kill, maybe they have a chance. Cryo takes matters into his own hands, though. A 2v2 over on this B side of the map. Yeah, they've changed their mind now. 30 seconds Going left. Going back Pick. into B. Uto ready for the re-exec. 
or at least trying to show the heavy util here and then teleport back into that A site. A site is now weak. It is just the Viper. It is just Leaf for the time being. But there's Molly Sasson. There's only 15 seconds left, Mimi. The clock is going away. Wingman's going to go in there. And if, if G2 can get in front of this and take down Wingman, this round might just be over. No! Bang! Defends Wingman! The spike has been planted. 100 Thieves still have a chance. It's Cryo versus two. Getting active, finding his. He has a Molly to play with. Icy has nothing. The first tap now. Icy looking for half. He gets it to half. Another fake, and now the Molly. That's a lot of time. Icy's got to go on the offensive. But look at that. Cryo's backed all the way out. The clock is moving. The clock is moving. And Cryo now back on the hunt. Icy looking. Pulls off. No, he can't go for the full stick. Cryo waits him out. Icy can do nothing. The clock goes down, and Icy's got it. He wins the fight in just the nick of time. To keep G2 in this one. Only a few Last seconds away for G2. But the rookie steps up. Having the game that people expected from this prospect. One enemy down remaining. And, and that was a ridiculous round from 100 Thieves. Yeah. I, I think three or four times, re-changing their mind on where they want to commit towards B, towards A. And honestly, G2, in these last few rounds, I think has been handling it very well. And a big part of that is this Noru and how fast those rotates can come with the gate crash. Icy's so coming in yeah. immediately. He can fight showers early, get back over that B site quick. 100 Thieves, though, tempo change after these slow rounds, blitzing it over into the A site. No control of U-Haul just yeah. yet, and Icy oh, gets scared. the opener. Or fighting coming, Leaf, one for one. Break spike on the planted. haunt. Trent can't hear a thing, and that spike timer begins to tick. 3v4. In comes the pit for Bang. He becomes the danger man in this round. How long can he stay up? How much can he do? Great oh, angle there from ready. Bustio. Evens out the odds and buys a bit more time. He'll escape. No! Trent, at the last second, catches him through the smoke. Tap on the spike. Spam last coming in. Bang! Dead. They're so close to him, and Valen knocks him down. Yeah. He showers. A chance oh. for revenge. Down to a 1v1. Trent has to hold this one halfway. The Prowler in his face. He hops off. The time is ticking. And he gets it done. He couldn't in Ascension. But here sides. with 100 Thieves, he bets G2. EU crushes that opening pistol round and clutches it up at the end. The Red Bull clutch for EU. And it starts off looking great, right? Icy gets that first kill, but then all the gets the pandemonium of this Viper's pit. AU repositioning from showers where he'd previously been seen to short, and getting those two kills was gorgeous. G2. They might have just kept themselves in this one, but it's still 8 to 4 up for 100 Thieves. Heading into that defensive half. Before we get there, the analyst desk. Thank you so much for that, Mimi and Ender. Wow, great start here for 100 Thieves. 8-4 total. Uh, and really, I think, you know, the, the big point that kind of stuck out to me throughout that entire first half, you got to talk about Bang and Busio. We kind of harped on Busio a little bit at the pre-show, Wyatt. But Bang also joining him. The output's been insane from both of these two. Yeah, on, on that attack, Asuna was not really able to do much on a lot of the rounds. He was getting shut down. He was trying to get some of the space, but was just going down. And then it was Bang who was following up after that. And in a few crucial moments, was able to push forward, find a kill, and then give his team enough space to actually play off of off that. Last week, Bang was really struggling. He was needlessly dying a lot. He was struggling to hold areas of the map. And right now, he's completely making up for that. He looks to be in sick form. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the same story for Bustio. It feels like last week might have been an off day for him. Normally, you see him as like a really confident player, taking every fight you can get an opportunity for. And you see that in this first half. Uh, he's playing really well. Yeah, stats definitely speak for themselves. Bang had a lot of standout moments there as well. And I think, if anything, what this goes to show is that you know you can't judge a book by its cover here. And even though the the cover was looking a little a little tattered a bit, Wyatt, it does feel like at the very least, hundred thieves have found themselves uh, you know a good good inroad here in this bind map.
Yeah, for sure. They give, this team has given Bang a long time to try to like flourish. They have a lot of belief in this guy, and I think they should. He's proven that he can be a legit player, but you know, being at this level is what they need him to do to get wins like this. Well, we'll see if Hunter Thieves can close it out and send it back over to your casters. Thanks very much to the desk. 100 Thieves, a great chance here. But G2, they were apt at those pistol Satchel. rounds in the game versus EG. Four for four. It's fast down short. Atena satcheling forward, but Valen was not caught by the flash. And he shuts him down. Talk about, about a guy that was money last week. It was Valen. Now EU out of showers. And Valen also the one to take him down. G2 responding to that aggression perfectly. Lucio's got an angle, but he has to get ahead of that haunt. G2. Two it's Valen again. There's five players around Va Valen, and somehow he's still the guy that gets the kill. He's down on six HP. He's grabbing an ult orb. He's up to four out of eight on the brimstone. The screen, and there's still time to play with. He's got a plant. He's clearly got two more kills left to him. Hell, if he gets over towards B long, he could get ult for round two. <laughs> I don't know if they'll orb max that much. There is a big flank coming here from Bang. And Leaf not watching the right angle turns. Oh boy, it gets awkward. But Leaf finds the timing, and now poor Cryo has too much to do. G2, big pistol round. Honestly, 100 Thieves kind of shocked me coming out of that. Playing so fast out the gate, but uh, G2 did a great job responding. Valen now five out of eight on that orb with the death. And again, like, he was fully ISO'd in that first fight. Got that one, came in for the trades eventually. Down towards showers. Down and out. That is boning fantastically for a round three here. High chance Valen has the ult on line for that round. Let's go. Come on, guys. Valen again top of the scoreboard. This guy's the IGL, but he can do it all. Boost TL? All right. Stunning shot there on the Icy with Boosie the was like, I'm an IGL too. He can do it too. <laughs> I can also do it all. If he gets another, that would truly be ridiculous. Wait, Kyle what? gets one with a classic. How's this happen? There's a flank coming quickly too. This round is suddenly dangerous for G2. Molly's to try and flush 100 Thieves out, but they're still chilling backside and they're biding their time for Bang to approach it. Bang's made it all the way up, peeking on through the smoke, but Leaf is holding him. G2 back with the numbers advantage on the hunt. His low players corralled in backside. G2 mop it up. It was a 3v5 for them somehow. Yeah. Kind of a little scary there. They learned something. Never right. in doubt. Never in doubt. All the plan, because uh oh, Valen Valen. Is now. Yeah, that makes sense. Now unfortunately for they actually bought pretty heavy into that round, a lot of SMGs, so it's one real gun on Icy. And then the ult. But what even is a real gun? They can all get it done. We saw it with Boostio, we saw it with Cryo. 100 Thieves also buying a lot of sheriffs into that round. Together. Have quite a few players on half armor here. That they do. One Molly on Bang as well, so not perfect in the utility camp. Notice how 100 Thieves are going to be playing this, this A site. Very deep positions held here. They've got tons of Mollies to be able to stall out of plant, but they're effectively getting full control of U-Haul. It really all comes down to this stall in EU. I think just off the hop there. Finds a kill through the smoke onto Trent, and I see us no way to trade that one on out. It is attrition for 100 Thieves as they slowly flood back, and the util setup for Cryo is lovely, and they have dealt with this round. Poor Jonah, just a specter, and not a chance in this one. I like 100 Thieves' read there, playing heavy back sight. I think one of the things that G2 are going to be missing with a comp like this by not running the raise is you don't have the ability to dive up on top of that truck and fight into back sight easily. No, you have to TP right in front of it, and that's where you play out the round. So then these fights into back sight are a lot harder to win. 100 Thieves can play heavy for gunfights, can play heavy volley denial on the plant, and sort of force G2 over into them. That's probably going to be a continual thing over towards A. With this Yoru as well, one thing it gives you is the ability to kind of send the player one side, fake out, apply more pressure than there is, and then immediately teleport back to the strong side and go for an execute. Yeah, what that means is I see look for a pick over in showers, and if you can't find it in your timing, if 100 Thieves don't creep up into him, he just snaps that TP, look at him, already back over to exec into B. Molly's traded both ways. 
Ooh. That Dizzy gonna be unrecoverable. Yeah, that's a good spot. Valen has the ultimate as well. How close is he gonna use that? 100 Thieves, there is nowhere to run as Icy comes on through the wall. Finds two, Bustio stuck, tethered underneath the tube. Yeah. And Valen takes him down. Everything about that execute was perfect. Sleep. The double flashes coming over the top for both Jonah and Icy combined with that haunt into the seas. Everything caught on. G2 is really cooked up some great combos with this composition. I think having the ability to have two different players who can bring that synergy with Trent's Haunt to basically guarantee you're getting a scan every time gives you so many options in the mid round. There's just too many things to do if you're uh, an anchor and you only have one teammate with you, right? Like, who's breaking that Haunt? Who's turning the flashes? Who's playing up close? A lot that you can lose track of in those tense moments. So though 100, 100 Thieves with a fairly comfortable lead, lead at the time being. Gonna be holding on to some guns. They've got enough money to buy into the next. Cryo's not far off that ultimate either. Still, this map is lean, pretty attack sided, and G2's comp, I think, gives them a lot of options on this attacking side. A comeback definitely becoming possible here. Yeah, so far in America, uh, Bind is the second most attack sided map, right behind Lotus. Lotus sitting pretty at 58.5% over on attack, Bind 56%. Not so lopsided, but still, still something to keep track of in this. And I think a lot of it is because I, I think a lot of our comps that we've been playing have been skewing a little bit more aggressive here in Americas. Uh, a little bit more aggro pieces. We don't play much of the, the Cypher on this map. There's no real Sentinels being played over here. It's a lot of tools to fight. And basically every agent has some sort of mid-range piece of utility that's great at flushing out corners, assisting in a fight, whether it's flashes or scouting or whatnot. G2's comp definitely epitomizes that. 100 Thieves going to be taking a timeout here from six. Asuna, after a pretty good start with the entries in that first half, has been struggling a little bit more in these last 10 or so rounds. 100 Thieves needs to do anything possible to win a series. It has been a drought for this organization. I mean, this year, the group of death was unlucky, but it goes deeper than that. 11 months ago was the last time they won a VCT game. Regular season, stage one last year against Furia. May 13th. Yeah. That one was Yowza. I but they have they've won one other one game match, since. But it was uh, a, a BO1. Yeah, it was a BO1 Scars. Scars, a team in Red Bull home ground. Who are and they? if you haven't heard of them, that's because right now they are the second to last ranked team in Japan Challengers. Mm. That's the best win, the only win that they have gotten since taking down Furia. And obviously G2, they've been close, right? They they, they, they won a map of find against Sentinels. But it has been tough for them. And it's been a drought for 100 Thieves fans. And it's actually a tech pause. That's fun. I love tech pauses. Famously. Yeah. We should have a techno pause. We can just they start blasting music. They did do that. They did do that. <laughs> Sorry, you, you just remind I, I'd love wow, that. Great idea. Away. No one's ever thought of that. Yeah, my bad. Okay. I'll stop doing it. Well, you know, the nice thing is, 100 Thieves, you have so much more time to chat to each other. You know, ask, ask some, uh, some icebreaker size. I wasn't trying to do that, but, you know, you know, get, get to know them. Get to know him out there. He's new on the roster. Sure, sure. We'll, we'll have to get to know him. What do you do in your free time? Play Valorant. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Most all you need to know. player interview. <laughs> uh, just for a little update for you folks at home, client crash. They're going to have to hop everyone back on in. Shouldn't be too long. I think it's just one player who crashed out. Why would out. you say that? Why would you say that, Mimi? There shouldn't be it's too... only one player. Ooh. See, I see. I, I just get nervous. I get nervous. As soon as you tempt fate like that, oh, we are in trouble. All right, well, well, well we have the time. Talk to me a little bit more uh, about this, this Yoru comp, because we've seen some teams kind of early this year run it. Uh, Sentinels, for example, was kind of taking their time with this, but they played a different variation. This is something new for G2. Yeah, I mean, the, the solo Yoru is definitely surprising. I think a lot of times people will try to pair Yoru with another dive agent to make so much chaos on site that you can mask those teleports a little bit. I think what G2 are using instead is the double flashes the combos that are very nice with the haunt to give Icy some space. You've also got the clone, so actually flooding out into sight, especially because that clone is supported a lot on this attacking side. Thankfully, was just a quick pause. We're back into things here. And for 100 Thieves, this is a pretty critical round. Their money's on a knife edge. They lose this round, we're likely looking at an even game. Yu is also just playing right on the outskirts of that knife over towards B-Long. Don't believe he was scouted out. 
There's a couple different options you can do with that early KO knife. We, we just saw one that was thrown right about there for full info on long, but you can also throw one that hits both Octagon and Hookah if you want to go for a split like this and save a little bit of utility if you don't get a ping. Less precise information, but if it doesn't see anything, very effective. But with this comp, you can have a combo like that, the Flash and the Prowler, and then you still have KO Flash Haunt or another Flash Prowler. Yeah. There's just so many layers to the combinations. And I think especially like after nerfs to stuff like the, the raised paint shells, it's way less reliable that you're actually getting kills off of those kinds of utilities. So sure. having flashes to actually take active fights can be really potent. Poison's on. A little bit of pressure put towards A, but it's going to be a rotation back over towards B with this Brim still entrenched towards Huka. Yeah, it's being read just a little bit here. Bustio moving back over towards this B side. G2 are going to need to go fast here. Good Molly to stop the flood, and Jonah P gets that opener. Haunt cleared off from EU, and a TP in from Cryo picks off the straggler in leap. Cryo's all the way back from behind, and he has the ult. The second they drop here, the second they look for the plant, he can unleash that ult. And here comes the flood off of it. Ox in the backside, but EU finds time. a massive There's one. There's no time! 11 seconds! They need a plan now. Trent's found a big kill. There's still players on this site that need to be taken care of. Five seconds. Spike on the floor. 100 Thieves deals with it. Wow! Cryo monstrous on that flank there. Jumping straight through the teleport. Got a beautiful timing on Leaf, who dropped all the way from short over towards Huka. And that gives him the ult. It was so nice because the old two, you'll see in the replay, it fully clears all of back sight and creates a perfect little lane for his teammates to jump out of. They can go straight through from that. If anyone from Hookah is watching those players flood, Cryo is going to be shooting them in the back off of the timing. That is a great on the fly call. Another little aggro piece here for Hunter Thieves. Thrash Roomba, fight down short. Austin gonna try and follow that one up, and he gets a kill on to Valon, and he'll retreat. Revenge from the pistol round. Asuna is back. And now Valon without the smokes. All G2 have is this Viper Wall to work down A short. Not an easy sight to play without those smokes, especially when you can't reliably take control over backside. They might try to scale all the way down Next. into Yuhal and play it out from there, or just pop that Yor ult for the clear. Icy's gonna get asked to do a lot yet again. Flash towards front sight. Your ult will clear out. Bustio is there, you took the combo. combo. Nice combo. Spam oh. too, but Icy's blindsided by Cryo. Swinging back through from showers. Minute left on the clock, and Asuna picks up another. They're struggling to win out on this one, but you do get a critical kill. That's Asuna taken care of. And now back into a 2v3. They've got to wait for gas for Leaf if they want to have a chance of escaping out from here. 100 Thieves should know they're stuck Toss over on short. There you have it. The wall up. They have a chance to make it on out, but look who's awaiting them over towards B. Because of Bang's position, 100 Thieves can leave two players left. over towards A. And Bang's got to be good for one here. It's a stinger, though. He needs it. And no one has a gun out. He falls, but the trade is there. Trent in the clutch. We've seen this one before. Where are 15 you? seconds. Haunt to buy time to go for this plant, but a teleport comes in from behind. The pressure is on, the crunch is on, and EU finds the kill. The haunt and the spam. I've been so impressed with EU's utility throughout this match. It seems like every time he's throwing a haunt, they're getting value. And they don't have the same tools that G2 has to combo. Sure, you can throw a dizzy haunt, but most of the time those pieces of util are getting invested alone. And still, he's picking these great timings to get value off the spam. It's timings where no one can be shooting it, really, right there. It's while a planter's, a player's trying to plant the spike. And on defense, he was throwing it a lot as players were diving into the site, so that no one's looking behind them to spam that through we got a lot of first kills anchoring over towards B that way. G2 walk up towards Huka. This is Asuna's responsibility and he's pushed off the line just a stinger in his hands. G2 might try to invest some ult here and win this round. Nightfall and the null command. Asuna taken very low but Bang is still looking for it with Icy down and more space taken towards Octagon. I mean, if, if G2 can't push Bang out of this position, they're not getting into the site. No haunt available for now for G2. They're gonna have to wait up here and try and let that utility recharge. And at this point, I don't know if we're using ults. The buy is bad, the players are low. And walking back over into A now. Keep your eye on that player in U-Haul, Cryo has been lights out this game. 
All four players contacting into Cryo's line of sight. Out of charge. Spots the first. Damage taken from the Sheriff. Second swing, and it's excellent support out of Bustio. 30 seconds. Cryo will continue to fight, but only finds the right timing to take him down. 25 seconds. This plant needs to be committed. And EU follows up off Bustio's utility again. Every one of those peeps supported. 400 Thieves. Excellent stuff. Match point. 100 Thieves seem to have such a strong game plan and sort of a group buy-in of how they want to play the game, uh, especially on this map, which you know is good for them. Like playing full util stall, not rushing their fights. I don't feel when they know they have the opportunity to stall out and play off of their, their utility. Instead, waiting for the swing to come in from Austin to fly through showers with the double satchels. It is always well coordinated on these fights to deny the spike being planted. And that was lacking for so long with this team. You think of old 100 Thieves, right? They get a man advantage situation, they bunker down, they play way too safe, they play scared. And now with this roster, it, it honestly reminds me a little bit of Sentinels with that buy-in, with that full commitment behind every piece of utility. When they have an advantage, they're not afraid to lose it. G2 now going to be the ones to call a timeout. Look, they've got some big ults here. Fade, KO, Viper, and they've got a buy, but they need five in a row here. And it just feels like A is a site they have not found an answer to. Because usually I would say, look, if you're just getting util denied on the plant over on A, Raze needs to dive for back site control, but they don't have that tool. Yeah, they've maybe got a nightfall so they could get a little bit more creative with the teleports, but going for deep TPs is a very, very risky, very hard to support that effectively. And that's why almost always you'll see shorter TPs into truck, into U-Haul, as opposed to going all the way back towards heaven. The only time they can really push back site is when they have your wall. We saw that get punished in the last round because everyone in main gets stalled. Yeah, they, they could change their smoke patterns because they've been doing really deep pipes and heaven smokes. Maybe do the double smoke on site and flash through on the fight. But that assumes the 100 Thieves isn't fighting you before that. Because right now, Asuna up on truck is ready to take a very early line down short. Map point, 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves very stacked over towards the A site, but now they can move EU back over here with the Viper Orb up in Hookah as well. It's very hard to take sand control because if you haven't flushed out, if you're if you're G2 and you haven't flushed out that area, well, then Raze could just throw paint shells through that space with a Molly combo, with the, the decay of the orb there too. You're just gonna get stalled out perma. So they need to come back into A short and force players away. Do you see the setup yet again? Fade Haunt ready to come over the top. A rocket for Asuna. Yeah. A swing out from Cryo. This is really tough to break through. But they're going too. for it. They need time and watch the teleport. They're gonna nightfall TP into backsight. Is it committed in time? Can they get something for it? There he goes. Asuna's down. TP committed. No one can hear it. Cryo is taken care of. That's a great start there. for G2. But now on the flank, a Viper leaping forward. Bang to try and pull this round back into control. Looks up on short, anticipates a player there, and Bustio finds one on the other edge of the pit. Two on four now, as 100 Thieves move back into the space. Wingman's on defuse. Wingman on. Bustio looking forward, but Leap takes him down. This one's not going to go to 100 Thieves. G2 are still in it. What a lovely combo there. Changing the TP pathing perfectly in time with their Nightfall commitment. And, ha and then just having great positioning in this post fight. Yeah, and you're not going to get a, a TP like that unless you're your scales through showers. That was so important that they split up 3-2 at the start there. And they finally got the backside fight. It's a great timeout call. Josh RT comes in with a plan. And that's the first time we've seen G2 really fighting for that space in showers. For the most part, it's been these strong side takes that haven't been working. But can you do it again? when you don't have the Nightfall, because now you've got to be comboing that with just flashes going into the back site. 100 Thieves, bad buy for them this time around. Although some ults to dip into if things get close. Yeah, Austin is Rocket. Could prove critical here. Oh, the TP in! Okay, this is fast from 100 Thieves, but Trent has dealt with it. That's massive from the man, but the trade comes through. Now, Bang has recovered a rifle. It's a 3v3, and they're into A. Cryo would be the hero here for 100 Thieves outside showers, going for that late wrap down short. This may come in faster than expected, but I think G2 are going to turn around because players could have pushed through on sand. They're ready for it. If he kills Jonah P, he has ult, but he Saw needs to win this fight. And it's going to be tough. A Viper wall in front of him. Jonah holding with support. And now this round becomes all the more difficult. 
100 Thieves no util to work with. Just walking into sight, Bustio. What a shot to find. Balance down. Leaf swinging into the front sight, but that smoke still delaying. And Bang is gone. Bustio was separated. And it should be nigh on impossible. Bustio will hop into the sight and fall to his demise. Probably the most important round of the game coming up for G2 now. Still down three, but it's buy versus buy. 100 Thieves have four heavy hitting ults ready to go. 100 Thieves just showed a bit of a sand trap look. I was talking about previously. So now G2 have unlocked a little bit more of the playbook, anticipating more of these ideas, but 100 Thieves have so much to work with now. Zix hitting another timeout. This is the round to close out if you're 100 Thieves. I feel like 100 Thieves, if they're coming into this one, the way they've gotten a, a, well, the two rounds were very different, but I think the last round was a little bit less accurate to how the next ones are gonna run. Just because it was a bad buy, 100 Thieves went for the very aggressive look. Sure. But I think they should hold on to Shower's control a little more heavily, right? The the Yoru TP pathing, it's very important that he gets control in Showers to send that one out on a line where it's not gonna be seen, not gonna be broken. And if 100 Thieves hold on to that space, you can still play very easy Molly Denial. You could actually play Heavy Octagon as well and look to fight around the extremity teleport lanes as opposed to fighting right down the center of the map on those two and sort of stop G2 from getting Showers control at all. The question now, what has the World Championship duo come up with in that timeout? What's the call to close this game? Zix and Bustio. The minds of 100 Thieves at work here. G2 are trying alternative strategies out here. They want a heavy open over towards B long. Scout out some control on that side of the map first. But Bang's gonna pit here, and with no Yoru wall, you don't have great tools to clear this. What on earth is this Viper wall that they threw out? Is that just a one chunk Viper wall from Bang? Wild. Thrown probably from the, the corner there, not giving you a whole lot of space. But with the pit set up over towards B and, and uh, Orb, I suppose, in Hookah, cutting off that area with the time to be able to run over there. I imagine he didn't have time to run to A and set that up before getting back to B. Showers is weak for 100 Thieves. And G2 have a lurk posture. 100 Thieves are holding onto short so, so heavy here. They can scout it out with a dog here. Dog notes one player shooting that one away. And the question is, what is the timing on the showstopper? Can Lee find anything from showers? The answer is no, and now the smoke blocks off his view completely. Austin has a showstopper of his own. If he activates it at the right time, he can oh. close this map. But it's a rotation yet again, G2. Are they heading back towards B? The Nightfall committed. It'll only ping one. Yeah, sees one player. The rotates are going to come in. 25 seconds on the clock. And Asuna through the teleporter. He gets his before being burned down. But it's still just 20 seconds. There's no control over long for G2. 17 seconds. They have to commit now. And 100 Thieves has arrived on this site. That ult is perfect. Cryo tries them on the entry. 10 seconds. There's no time. There's no chance. 100 Thieves. Map number one is there. Defenders win. Hundred Thieves looking very strong once again. <laughs> the on the fly, fly ideas, the reactions in the server. I loved those 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 side holds from them. Playing heavy backside, tons of utility to stall it out. Very well coordinated from them on their best map. And I think Cryo might be back. He had that crazy back, jet baby. game last week. He's playing well on the brimstone here. Promising signs for this hundred thieves roster. But honestly, G2 that comp had so many looks with the double flash, with the fade combo, but that makes it all the more impressive that 100 Thieves managed to adapt to a, a very different idea on this map and take the win. Yeah, I mean, ultimately at G2, we saw some of the limitations of them, especially on their eight hits. They got creative with the ult, but it didn't seem like it was enough to come through in the end. Well, a big win there, 400 Thieves, a chance to get their first series win in 11 months if they can close out this map number two, which is coming up after this.
Excuse me, would you mind taking a picture of us? Oh, no problem. Thanks. Ooh. Yes, problem. You need Verizon. Trading that old thing and get a new iPhone 15 Pro with tons of storage, so you can take all the pics. So many selfies. A preposterous amount of panos! That means panoramic. And as many portraits of me as your heart desires. How about none? None. None, yeah, none feels right. Trade in any iPhone in any condition and get iPhone 15 Pro on us. Only on Verizon. Red Bull gives you wings.